Okay, we'll continue with the section 6.2 routing of uh, chapter 6, Network Layer. Now, host packet forwarding decision. A host can send a packet to itself, local host, or remote host. When it's sending a packet to itself, a host is using the special address, uh, IPv4 address, reserved IPv4 address, or 127.0.0.1, which is referred to as a loopback interface. The loopback, why are we ping it ourselves? We ping ourselves to make sure that our interface card has been installed correctly, the TCP IP stack is running properly. Now, uh, that's the reason why we ping ourselves. Anything on the range of 127.0.0.4.8 refers to as a local host. It can ping a, a local host on the network, on the same network as itself. For example, this PC1 here can ping itself our loopback interface, it can ping a local host somewhere on the local network. So for example, if, you are, if they are both on the same network, it will be able to ping it. And it can ping devices on the remote networks or remote hosts. When it pings a device on the remote host, it does need a gateway, a default gateway. So the packet is going to go to the gateway first, and the gateway is going to uh, send the packet towards the remote host. If it's pinging on the local network, a local network, then that uh, packet is not going to go to the gateway. It's going to go directly to the uh, PC or host on the local network. Default gateway is the device that routes the traffic from the local network to the devices on the remote network. In a home or small business environment, the default gateway is often used to connect local network to the internet. Host must maintain their own local routing table to ensure that network layer protocols are directed to the correct destination network. The local table of the host typically contains direct connection. This is a route to the loopback interface 127.0.0.1. Local network routes. The network which the host is connected to is automatically populated on the host routing table. Local default route. The default route represents a route the packets must take to reach all remote network's addresses. The default route is created when a default gateway address is present on the host. So when you enter the default gateway, then that uh, host knows how to send packets to anywhere because anywhere you want to send the packet to is just going to send it to the gateway. The routing table, the, the host routing table or IPv4 host routing table, it's you can view it by typing a command on the Windows uh, root print or netstat minus r. Both commands that will generate the same output and has three sections. Uh, we'll have the interface list, list of the media access control addresses and assigned interface number of every network capable interfaces, including Ethernet, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. It will have IPv4 routing table, list of all known IP routes, including direct connection, local network and local default routes. Then we have an IPv6 routing table, list of all IPv6 routes, including direct connection, which is a, which is itself, a local network, the network that is connected to, and a default routes. Netstat minus R output is divided into five different columns, which identify. First, down here, we have a network destination, list of all reachable networks. Then we have a net mask, list of subnet mask, that informs the host to determine that which portion is the network and which portion is the host of the IP address. Gateway, list of all the addresses used by a local computer to get to the remote network or remote destination. If a destination is directly reachable, it will show as on link in this column. Then interface, list of the addresses or the physical interface used to send the packet to the gateway that is used to reach the network destination. And in the end, here we have the metric which will uh, list the cost of each route and is used to determine the best path or best route to the destination. The lower the metric, the better. Okay, now I will show you the demonstration on viewing IPv4 host uh, routing table. Okay, so I've got PCA here. So I'm gonna start and CMD here. And in the command prompt, I write uh, netstat minus R. Okay, I'll just maximize the command prompt so we can see it. Okay, 
So we have three sections here. So if I just mark here, we have three sections. This is the interface list section. What interfaces we have here? Uh, the IPv4 routing table section. And then we have an IPv6 routing table section. Here we're going to see the IPv4 routing table section. Uh, first, we, we see the network destination. Where do we know how to get? What networks we know how to get to? Here we have a, a, the direct host, like a loopback interfaces. Then we have a local network. This is our local network. We have some multicast addresses and some uh, broadcast addresses. The local network, we can see that we have 192.168.11.0. That's our network. 192.168.11.100. That's our IP address of this of this PC. Then we have 192.168.11.255. That's our broadcast address of our network. Here is one good address, all zeros, 0 .0 .0 .0 .0. That identify a default network. So anything that I don't know how to reach, that is on, not on my table, I'm just going to send it to my default network. This is the rest that we have a net mask. These are the uh, subnet mask, which will define which portion of the address is the network address and which portion of the address is the host address. Then we have a gateway. So only my default network, I'm going to reach it through my uh, default gateway address, 192.168.11.1. The rest, everything is on link, so I can directly send them. And what interface I'm going to use to get to these networks. We can see that uh, the default network is using my uh, interface, one my main interface. The other two are loopback interface. And then we have the metric. The metric identifies which one is, if there's two paths, which one is the best path to take. Lower the metric is better. Then we'll continue. Um, so router packet, now a router packet forwarding decision. The router looks at this routing table to determine where to forward the packets. Same, the host looks at the routing table as well. Same as the router, we'll look at the routing table. Now router will have uh, information about directly connected networks or directly connected routes and remote routes. Directly connected routes are these routes come from the active router interfaces. Router adds a directly connected route when an interface is configured with an IP address and is activated. Each of the router's interfaces is connected to a different network segment. Router maintains information about the network segment that they are connected with the routing table. And then the router will keep, in the routing table, will keep the remote routes. These routes come from a remote network destination to other routers. Routers to the net, routes to the network can either be manually configured or the local router by the administrator or dynamically configured by enabling the local router to exchange routing information with other routers using dynamic routing protocol. So the router one here has uh, how many directly connected networks? Well, it has three. One on this interface, one on the interface underneath here, 192.168.11.0, and another one on the on the serial interface, 209.165.200.224. So three directly connected routes. And he knows about these two routes as well. On these are remote routes. They learn from router two. Either they learned that's dynamically using some dynamic routing protocol like RIP, EIGRP, or SPF, or we can statically configure them on router one how to get to these networks. But just so you remember, router will keep two types of uh, routes on the routing table. Directly connected routes, as soon as you activate an interface, boom, that route is enabled on the routing table. And remote routes as is learning from another networks or from another routers. IPv4 routing table, on a Cisco iOS router, the command show IP route can be used to display the routing table. So show IP route, we'll see what's, what's on our routing table. A router also provides additional information, additional route information, including how the route was learned, when it was last updated, and which specific interface to use to get to the predefined destination. When a packet arrives at the router interface, the router examines the packet header to determine the destination network. If the destination network matches the route in the routing table, the router forwards the packet using information specified on the routing table. If there are not two, if there are two or more possible routes to the same destination, the metric then is used to decide which route appears on the routing table. 
First, we have a directly connected root. So, direct, directly connected root in table entries, the root source. The root source is labeled as A in the figure. You can see the A, C, or L. It identifies how the root was learned. Directly connected root interfaces have two root source codes. First is C, identifies the directly connected networks. Directly connected networks are automatically created when an interface is configured with an IP address and activated. So as soon as you go interface FA00, IP address 10.1.1.1, subnet 255.255.255.0, no shutdown, boom. The, it's updated on the routing table as well. And L, L identifies that the link is a link local route. Link local routes are automatically created when an interface is configured with an IP address and activated. L, it's a new in 15.0 in, uh, version. It wasn't before. If you're using router with uh, iOS uh, operating system 12.4 or something, you will not see the L uh, root. Destination network. The destination network is la labeled as B here on the figure. It identifies the address to the remote network. And then C is out outgoing interface. It identifies the exit interface to use when forwarding packet to the destination network. So, for example, network 192.168.10.0 forward slash 24 is directly connected, so direct to the root, and you will use the interface gigabit ethernet 00 to get to that network. Remote networks, on the other hand, they are a bit more complicated. There's a lot more information on the remote network routing table, but we'll go through the uh, what's in there. So, for example, here on this label, so on label A, on this color, Identify how the network was learned by the router. D, this says, okay, well, this route was learned through EIGRP. They are they have the codes. So S will be a static route, or R will be is learned through RIP routing protocol. Or if you see O here, it will say, okay, we learn through OSPF routing protocol. This section here in yellow identifies the destination network. So for example, we learn through EIGRP about destination 10110 forward slash 24. In this section, C, identify the administrative distance, distance or trustworthiness of the root source. So 90. So since we are learned through EIGRP, the administrative distance or trustworthiness of EIGRP is set to 90 by default. For example, if we learn this route through OSPF, administrative distance will be 110. So Lower, it's better. So if we have to compare those two, do we want to trust OSPF better or EIGRP? Well, we say EIGRP is more trustworthy. Or if we have a static route, for example, the AD will be one, or trustworthiness will be one. So we trust quite a lot of static. Uh, AD for directly connected or C routes is zero. So we really trust the directly connected network. The section D under D here, the color, identifies the metric to reach the network a remote session a remote network so here for example uh, you can see that's the metric for the EIGRP using so something like 2 million 170 that's the calculation to get to that metric which you will learn when we cover the EIGRP uh, the metric for rep for example will be hop count Lo less hops better and so on um, the metric for the OSPF will be the cost it just identifies the, the metric so, for example, um, if we can, we have to compare two. We have a, we can get to the destination. There are two paths. We look at the metric. Lower the metric, better. Then the next is identify the next hop IP address to reach the uh, remote network. This will tell you the next hop IP address or the neighbor's IP address, how to get to the remote network. The section under F, which is 000005, identifies the amount elapsed time since the network was discovered. And then the last one, serial 0 forward slash 0 forward slash 0, identifies the outgoing interface on the router to reach the destination network. Okay, now I will show you um, how to view IPv4 routing table and IPv6 routing table on GNS3. So I've got, this is my routing. This is my network that we've been using for this chapter. Um, open secure CRT. And um, 
Okay, so first command is, you remember, show IV root. I think I need to expand a little bit so we can see it better. Show IP root. Okay, let me just clear clear the screen first and then run the command show IP root. Show IP root. Okay, first you want to see is the codes. Codes will tell you how did you find that root, how did you identify the root. So we can see the C here is directly connected, or connected network. We have a directly connected to 192.168.11.0 forward slash 24, says here directly connected. To get to that network, we use interface fast Ethernet 00. There's no, because it's very, very small network, that we haven't learned anything from any other uh, routers. So um, I'm just gonna we're just gonna make a static root here. It's config t. Uh, so IP root, for example, uh, to root to the destination 10.1.1.0 uh, with a mask 255.255.255.0. Um, use address 10.1.1.5. Uh, just create bogus a uh, root in, root there. So it will appear in our routing table. Show IP root again. Okay. And it's not there anymore. Uh, it's not there because I don't have any any interface on there. So let's just let's just change that. So config D interface say FA00. Okay, and show IP root. Okay, now we can see we have another static root. Uh, network 10110 is directly connected as well uh, through fast Ethernet 00. But we can see from here, we can see that uh, we have learned this route statically. Uh, the administrative distance is uh, one for this uh, route. Okay, well, there's there's a confusion there. Um, static route, if you set the exit interface as your local interface, uh, exit interface your, your, uh, your interface, then the administrative distance, some people say zero, but it's actually one. If you set the exit interface as a neighbor's IP address, then the static, uh, the administrative distance is the one. That just the AD the confusion here, but it's always on the static route. It's always one. Okay, and then uh, the next we're gonna see the IPv6. So IPv6 uh, route. There we go for IPv6 again. We can see the codes how we learn these routes, and we have a, a local route and directly connected routes. Okay, that was uh, part 6.2, and I will see you on the next part, uh, 6.3.